to build a shake detector using our Android device. Specifically, we're going to use the accelerometer, which we've already used on previous applications. But this time, we're going to use it to figure out when the device is being shaken. I've taken our previous accelerometer project, and I've added a few additional private variables to it to help us with this endeavor. Specifically, we've added the x, y, and z variables to track the current acceleration, and we're going to use these last x, last y, and last z variables to track what we had gotten for acceleration values previously. By subtracting one from the other, we'll be able to tell how big a change we've experienced in each of these directions. We're also going to be calculating the current time in milliseconds, and we're going to be using this to make sure that we don't fire the acceleration sensors for too often. So let's have a look at what happens here. We're going to have our standard initialization method, and I'm just going to set uh, the, the sensor manager and the accelerometer to their proper values and set up the register listener so that this class is the one that reacts when the sensor gets fired. I'm going to initialize all my variables to some safe value and then I'm going to set up the on sensor change method which is the only method that contains any code of substance in this app. So the first thing that I'm going to do is try and figure out how much time has passed since the last time that I updated uh, my app. And if this period is too short, as defined by the current time minus the last time, uh, and I have this update period set to 300 milliseconds, you may have to play with this on your device to see what would be a better value for you. I'm using a Galaxy uh, S5 to do my testing, and this update period of 300 milliseconds and a shake threshold of 800 uh, are working well for me. We're going to figure out that once we've uh, had enough time go by, we're going to calculate current acceleration values for x, y, and z. Now there are several algorithms available out on the internet to let you calculate uh, the shake speed. Uh, some of them use high-pass filters, some of them use low-pass filters. I found that this particular algorithm, which is the simplest of all the algorithms that I have found, works surprisingly well, so I see no reason to go with a more complex algorithm. When we calculate the speed and find it to be larger than a certain threshold, we're going to say that a shake has occurred, and I'm going to put out a message to the screen saying that a shake has been detected, and I'm going to print the speed of the shake uh, next to our message. And then we're going to update our x values to our last x values so that the next time we come into this procedure, we'll be using these values as a reference. I can't test this particular app with the emulator, so I'm going to create an APK file by going over to Build APK. And then once the APK file is built, I'm going to download that into my phone as described in Unit 1, and then I'm going to test the app. Now when I run the app on my phone and shake it, you can see that the shake is being detected and the speed is showing up. And here, let me do it again.